Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Terminator Juice, a special Sunday edition of Juice Opinions. I was thinking I was going to wait for the podcast, the next podcast. Uh, I think it's number 126, um, which airs tomorrow if you're watching this live. And yeah, but I wanted to get a few things out there from my perspective and just give you guys my thoughts. Um, and some damage control coming your way, uh, courtesy of Terminator Juice. So, uh, just kidding. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how the reaction is. Um, first off, I just want to thank everybody who tunes in live to these. You know, it's it's a way smaller number than the uh, the podcast, but I do appreciate um, everybody that shows up. Uh, I see there's uh, some frequent viewers of both the podcast and the Juice Opinion. So, really appreciate that. Hopefully this image is correct. I don't never know what this uh, ever since I got this new camera um, if the image can be mirrored. It, it's mirrored on my screen, but apparently once you guys see it, it's fine. So, all right, let's start. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is for the PS4 owners out there. Now I have a 65 inch Sony LED TV and. Uh, the built-in YouTube app isn't the greatest. The TV was manufactured in mid to late 2013. Or, yeah, 2013. I got it in t early 2014. I watched, I will usually watch a lot of my stuff on just through the smart TV YouTube app. But I gotta say, I downloaded the, the PlayStation, or the YouTube app on the PS4. And I never really used it, but I signed in. And I gotta say, it has the best picture quality of any uh, any way I watch YouTube, even on my computer. Um, so if you got a PS4, I highly recommend you watch uh, the the Switch trailers or anything, any footage, uh, direct feed footage or anything on the PS4 YouTube app. Uh, Digital Foundry has like a 19 minute. Breath of the Wild. Now they were kind of being negative about the game on the console standpoint. Um, they love the handheld version. Um, they're impressed, but uh, it is direct feed, the best direct feed footage I've seen by far of Zelda. It's phenomenal, and watching it um, on the uh, through the PS4 on my 65 inch, I can like if it looks that good. And YouTube has compression and stuff, and usually games look way better. It looks so good that I would be happy if the Switch version looked just like that. Just like the YouTube video. It's so clean. It's so impressive. They're sitting there kind of saying how it looks dated and last gen, and you can tell it started as a Wii U game. And I'm just like, holy crap, this game looks freaking amazing before they got to that. I'm like, wow. And then I watch it again on my computer, and it, it didn't have the same pop. So... Again, if you got a PS4, get the YouTube app, watch, maybe mute that because I, I didn't like what they were saying. They're, they're painting a pretty negative picture about the Switch. and But Jesus, that game looked awesome. And yeah, um, MDZ79, I, he's talking about the, the Witcher 3. Uh, I've seen a lot of Witcher 3s better. And just off topic here, uh, I saw a comment. A guy, you never know in comments if someone's being sarcastic, but he's like, it was the video on GameStop or GameSpot that's saying the size of Breath of the Wild for downloads, like 13 gigs. Of course, painting it negative. People, you know, you can tell in the comments that the PlayStation, Xbox One gamers who are just so used to having to install they're all like oh my god that's how that's just ridiculous but anyway someone's like oh the witcher's like 40 gigs so i guarantee that's a better game right there and uh and it, i don't know if he was being sarcastic and i hope so because it, it, it's funny as sarcasm but if it's real i mean that's the most pathetic thing i ever read and then somebody sony playstation owned owned you know like own being a owning somebody or whatever he said and this is funny he's like well file size has nothing to do with the great game but uh the witcher 3 will be better because it wasn't rushed to be a, a release uh launch title for for a console <laughs> implying that legend of zelda breath of the wild was rushed out <laughs> to match 
the Switch's release date, which is so funny because the, the truth is the Switch was more than likely delayed to match the Breath of the Wild release. So that's just so freaking funny to me. But anyway, um, we'll get on to storage stuff later. So let's talk about the price now. In the uh, podcast the other day, we talked about it real quick. And, uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, didn't go all in with the discussion. So, again, Digital Foundry, um, they they made a good, uh, qu- they asked a good question, which is going to be part of the next Juices Loose podcast about the marketing, the switch should be marketed as a home console or portable, um, depending on, you know, because they think it should be reversed. But anyway, we'll, we'll discuss that. Um, so let's talk about the price. So two ninety nine ninety nine in the U S um, you know, Canada is more and all the other regions, but you know, all systems are more in those other regions. So it's a new system for sure. Um, and I just get sick of the, well, the PS4 is two ninety nine with a game right now, and it was two fifty during the holidays. The Xbox One S is two ninety nine right now. When the Xbox One and PS Four came out, where people were like, eh, well, the Xbox three hundred and sixty is only one ninety nine right now. What a ridiculous price! No, because it was new systems. Even though they had all the same games, the the PS Four's launch lineup had four, or you know, specific to the PS Four. The rest of the games were all on the PS3, every single one of them. And no one would say, well, the the PS4 is 400, the PS3 is only 199. Um, Some people might have said that, but it's not a legit argument because it's a new system compared against old systems. Now, you could be like, as somebody, let's say you only have a Wii U, you don't have a PC, PS4, or Xbox One, and you're looking at getting a new system. Okay. If you want to play third-party multiplats and all that, then you're already looking at the PS4. So to you, you might be like, all right, I could spend 300 get the Switch and play Zelda, which I can play on my Wii U, or I can get a PS4 Xbox One for the same price and get a bunch of other games. And, you know, the PS4 is more powerful. The Xbox One probably seems like it's more powerful. So if graphics and all that is important to you, then obviously get those systems. But you don't just compare uh, a Nintendo console, new Nintendo console, to a three-plus-year-old system's price because the price, price has always dropped. Um, the Switch price is going to drop. And it's just how it is. It's new. And it seems like people are just completely ignoring that this thing has a screen and is totally portable. Now, if you're only looking at it as a home console, then, yeah, it's a little more fair of a comparison. But the fact it has its screen... And everybody, every uh, impressions I've seen so far rave about the screen. So the colors are great, sharp, bright picture, and they, you know, it looks just as good as it does on the TV. And I believe that. So you got this great, most advanced, most powerful portable system ever. The 3DS launched at 250, the Vita launched at 250 with, you know, no memory. You had to actually buy additional memory made the system at least 310 minimum just to be able to use it you had to have some kind of the memory you had to have at least a whatever the small size was so it's an you know if you look at it as a portable how much more powerful it is than any other portable before it's probably the biggest jump in visuals from one generation to the next in a portable um the 300 makes sense the joy cons all the the advanced motion and the camera and the uh the HD Rumble, whether or not you think you're going to use that stuff, that's part of why it costs more. And the Kimishima effect, a lot of people, no one's saying this. I, I may be the only one who's thought this. Definitely the only person I know that's saying this. He's a businessman. And everybody that, you know, all the a lot of haters that were so glad that now we got this, this business-focused guy in charge, I don't know if Iwata would have had accessories as expensive as they are or the system as expensive as it was, you know. He's looking to keep the company as profitable as possible, and it's just a different philosophy. So potentially those accessory prices are a result of Kimishima. You don't know. Maybe they wanted their profit margin a little higher on their council and their accessories. So just think about that. I don't know if it's, you know, could be completely false. 
they could be making less money. I mean, I don't know, but it just it's kind of funny that Kimishima takes over and you know, you got Super Mario Run, ten dollars, whether that was his decision or not. Um, the NES classic shortage. He was in charge of that. He was in charge well in advance to decide the shipment quantities, pricing, all that stuff. So I'm just thinking about Kimishima. Maybe this is his, maybe the effect of him being in charge now. Um, so let's, again, let's go down to the, the handheld side. If you're a portable gamer, mostly you're looking for the Switch to, to play it like you played your 3DS or any past handheld. Um, you're not used to paying 300 for a system unless you're the Vita. Vita at launch was over 300, like I said, with a memory card. 250 for the 3DS, you know, it didn't sell that great till it hit 200. But this is a pretty damn impressive handheld, and it also can be docked and played on your TV seamlessly. So, um, and with all the access, uh, technology in there, it just seems like a fair price. Now, for somebody like me, who's thinking, and you know, this could change, but my in my mind, this thing's going to be docked 99% of the time, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try the Joy-Con in the grip and see how that feels. I don't. I've heard people love it. Heard people say it's it's not the best. The analog sticks aren't the best. Uh, Rob and Robert said the analog sticks have short travel. Um. So I'm gonna have to get the Pro Controller more than likely to, you know, and the Pro Controller seems definitely like a legit, serious controller. Not Xbox One Elite because it doesn't have the customization, but the Xbox One Elite is $150. So um, that's something else to think about. This Pro Controller, I heard the D-pad's just freaking amazing. The analog sticks, it's comfortable. I'm waiting for uh, Rob and Robert to be on the podcast tomorrow. They'll they'll give their full impressions of the controller. They might even have their own videos up by then. Everybody seems to love the Pro Controller. So, yeah, 70 bucks. It's expensive. PS4, Xbox One controllers are 60. The color PS4s are 65. Um, do it, you know, at launch. It's going to be 70 everywhere. But just be a smart consumer. Just like uh, I got my Xbox One controller wired controller for pc um i paid 43 dollars for it and everywhere else it was 65 or 70 because of that comes um with a long wired controller and it's also a wireless controller it works it'll work perfectly as an xbox one controller um if i put batteries in it so um just you know use the joy cons and check for uh, a price drop on amazon for the pro controller you know uh I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to play Breath of the Wild with the Joy-Cons. I'm going to see. I might even, not, not even have them in the grip. You know, keep them separate. Let's, you know, see how that feels. And then hopefully uh, pick up a Pro Controller at a discount. Because um, I don't think accessories qualify for the 20% off Amazon Prime. So, yeah, they, they definitely, uh, I was disappointed more in the price of the dock, which is $90, a separate dock, which... It has an HDMI port, a USB 3.0, and the USB-C connector and adapter, and a fan built in, and that little LED light. That's not $90 to me. That's more like $40, um, honestly. So that, to me, is the most ridiculous of all the prices, all the accessories, system, everything, that dock price. Because I was going to buy a second dock, put it down, put it so what I want to play on my 84-inch uh, projected screen. Um, it would have been nice just to have a dock there and plug it in. So we'll have to see. Uh, but I think that's the most outrageous. The Joy-Cons being 80. I mean, technically it's two controllers. Um, if you, you know, turn them sideways, um, they, I think they both come with the little wrist things and the extender for the LR buttons. So yeah, that's a little bit, pr I think it's the standalone ones a little more ridiculous at 50, but like I said, this could be Kimishima. This could be a little bit higher profit uh, margin um, going forward. So it sucks. The AC adapter's thirty dollars. That's kind of ridiculous. Um, we'll see. But don't you know? Don't sit there and act like the Xbox One, PS4 controllers weren't sixty. Three years ago, they were sixty. They're still sixty unless you can find 
a deal of the day or something like that Xbox One controller. Um, if I go to what is Walmart or Myers, that PC Xbox One controller was 79 or 69, I forget. It was 70 or 80. I just happened to get it for, it might have been 48. It was in the 40s, mid 40s. So, you know, don't forget that. So, but again, if you're just going to have a home console, if you're just using the Switch as a home console, it really doesn't see seem um, that big of a jump over Wii U. And Digital Foundry was talking that Bomberman game runs at 30 frames per second, 720p. Um, there was an RPG, uh, Skylanders was 30, 30 frames per second. Now, these are launch titles, and, you know, the dev kits won't, haven't been out that long. And these, the thing they pointed out was these games could be, let's make it work on the portable side. And there's no, uh, what do you call it? restrictions or there's no incentive or forcing of Nintendo to say hey when it's docked make sure you bump up the performance so they don't have to and they're they're thinking that they just made it work on the portable you dock it and you get no benefit um, so as somebody who's planning on this being mostly the home console that's disappointing to hear uh, Splatoon doesn't do anything different Splatoon 2 runs in the same resolution same, you know, jaggies everywhere, which I don't care about. I thought Splatoon 1 looked great. And it seems like a marginal improvement. So if, if you're going from Wii U to Switch and you're thinking only as a home console, um, just from a graphic standpoint, just from a power level standpoint, you're not going to take advantage of the screen. Um, you know, then, then it, it's a little bit of a harder sell. You know, I have mine pre-ordered. And I'm, I, it's the games that have me excited. But it is a little just on a tech from a tech standpoint of value of the tech. Um, if you're not using the screen, then I could see someone saying, "Hey, it's it's not really worth 300 for what you're getting," and uh, I I wouldn't be able to argue that. So, um, you know, but again, off TV play something I really like, especially during football season. Um, I will take advantage of that. And, uh, you know, who knows how much I'll use the portable side, playing in bed and stuff like that. Who knows? Um, at this point, though, it does seem like just a marginal uh, improvement um, at this stage over the Wii U as far as graphics and stuff. It's a new game engine or graphics engine. Or not a graphics engine. Architecture is what I'm trying to say. Um, the, the Wii U's was a much more efficient, I think. Uh, less, needs less power to get better results. Maybe this new, maybe this ARM architecture is a little more power hungry. X86 is ridiculous. Like, you have to just throw a lot of power at it. So, um, anyway, I see people in the comments. Someone said that the PS4 controller is like 47 on Amazon. Yeah, the standard one, the colored ones are still 65, I believe. And the thing's three years old. So, like I said, just wait on the Switch Pro controller. You know, maybe it'll be a deal of the day and stuff. Uh, I do think 70 is a little steep to start with, though, for sure. Um, and you can't use the Wii U Pro Controller. But So anyway, yeah, just to summarize, the price, um, the handheld part of it, I think is totally justified. Um, if you're just going to keep it docked the whole time, it might be, it's a little tougher of a pill to swallow um, for for what it seems like the, the tech is. And, and who knows, a year from now, Games could be looking phenomenal. I don't know. I don't know if these are um, these started on the Wii U and like Splatoon 2 probably maybe start on the Wii U. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. But again, it's all about the game. So that's here, here's the positive to all this. This isn't a Vita getting you know C and D teams making games. Um, this isn't the 3DS getting the lesser, in my opinion versions of Mario Kart, 3D World. I think 3D Land was was good, but it's a big step down when you play 3D World and go back. Mario Kart 7, to me, is a big step down from Mario Kart 8. Um, you're getting Nintendo's full attention. 100% of their full dev support is going to the Switch. Now, yeah, the, the, the launch lineup and stuff isn't looking amazing, but what systems ever launched the first year with just a a bunch of great games. I mean, the Switch is getting probably the best game of all time, Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, 
uh, Mario, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, um, and there's a few others. Um, though, just those four heavy hitters in the first 10 months, if Xenoblade makes it out in 2017, it'll probably be in Japan. But uh, I don't think a system's ever had four heavy hitters like that in the first 10 months ever. So uh, we'll have to see what year two and three look like to really judge it. I'm not going to judge anything at this point, but I'm, I'm excited about Nintendo's full support going to the system. And that's why I had no problem paying 300. And uh, like I said, in the podcast, I paid 380 after tax for the Wii U and I paid 317 for the switch. So it's $63 cheaper. And uh, it's going to, I mean, it's guaranteed to have, way better support throughout its life from first party third party exclusives standpoint so that's that's a good side um so let's talk about the storage situation because this to me is just it's funny it's hilarious and it's sad so the the switch has built in 32 gigs of memory like flash memory or whatever that is not it comes with a 32 gig sd card from what i understand because they were playing and on the treehouse and they showed it there was no uh, card in there so that's 32 gigs of inter internal memory um, flash memory just like the Wii U so and it's a cartridge based system there's no installs there's no need for installs so right there um, that 32 gigs is gonna be more than enough for DLC save files screenshots and indie games it's gonna be more. You might never run out of that 32 gigs. Um, and just a comparison, that my PS4, I have 291 gigs available. I have three games, two of which are s smaller. One's a Vita game ported to uh, the PS4, takes up 10 gigs, um, and then three game demos. And I've used over 200 gigs of the system's memory. Um, that's like 40%. Three games, three demos. And two of those games were small. Like I said, Ratchet & Clank's 26 gigs and Rush Gravity Rush Remastered is 9.8 gigs or something. Uncharted's over 60 gigs. So if I had three AAA titles, um, I'd have about 80 less gigs. I'd have closer to 200 gigs of storage available. So, and those, that's not digital that's well ratchet and clank's digital but don't matter um so 32 gigs on the switch is probably equivalent to probably 500 to 700 gigs on the ps4 um if you had to install games but you don't so who knows what it's more closely to um related to zelda's only 13 gigs and that's i guarantee that's going to be the biggest game from nintendo by a long shot uh, Mario is probably going to be something like five gigs again. Splatoon will probably be like five, four. So even if you're going to download Nintendo games, you're, you're going to have plenty of space. Um, so I'm not worried about the internal storage being 32 gigs. Now here's the argument people keep saying. First, PS4, Xbox One are three years old and they come with 500 gigs. Like I just said, this 32 gigs is equal to or more than your PS4 and Xbox One's 500 gigs, um, just on a game game basis, not having to install. Secondly, people are saying, "Well, I want to go digital only this gen, or I'm I'm a digital only type of guy, and I want it's ridiculous." If you're a digital only guy, and I don't know if anybody watching this is going to be, please name a video game system that you know since digital games. That launched and has all the storage you need without having to buy extra. I'll wait. Wait. I know the answer. There is, had never been a single system ever that come out and had enough storage for digital-only games, especially uh, not just indie games, not Xbox Live games. I'm talking uh, full retail games. There's never been a system that had enough storage for, for that person. Xbox 360, uh, I forget what the uh, the latest, the last like major Xbox 360 revision, I think it was 250 gigs. Um, games were 20 to 30 gigs. 
So less than 10 games. I mean, the 3DS launched with a two gig or two or four gig. Um, games are under a gig to one gig. You had to buy a memory card. The Vita, you couldn't even use the Vita without buying an external or an extra memory card. Uh, PS4, like I just said, Uncharted 4, 60 gigs. Um, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is 80 gigs. The remastered Call of Duty is 40 gigs. That's 120 gigs. With If you had Uncharted 4, you already had 180 gigs with two games. And those aren't even digital. I mean, those are with having the disc, but let's just say you, you're going digital. There's not a system on this planet that works for somebody going only digital. Um, PS4 Pro, what is that? Two terabytes or something? Or is that a one terabyte? I forget. There's a two terabyte option somewhere, or one terabyte. Yeah, those give you more storage. You're going to be able to put a lot more games on there, twice as many. Those systems are $400 plus. Um, and guess what? You're going to run out of storage if you're digital only, no matter what. The PS4 is a pretty quick and easy uh, to replace the hard, hard drive. But you got a hard drive is way more than a SD card. Like you're going to be spending sixty, eighty, a hundred dollars to, especially to go to like a terabyte, if you had the five hundred gig model. Um, so the digital only guys have no argument because there's not a system on this planet that's geared towards you without having to spend money on expanding the memory. And one hundred twenty-eight gig SDXC card. For the switch a micro forty dollars you got 128 gigs and like i said these games are going to be five to 15 gigs um we'll see what third party games are so you're gonna have to like i just keep repeating myself but no matter what system you have you're gonna have to expand the memory if you're digital only that's the point i mean it's that's a fact that's not an argument that's not damage control that's just pure fact and so you can throw that argument right out the fucking window because it's worthless. So, and then, you know, if third party games are coming to the Switch, let's say the next Call of Duty, um, and you're just insisting on going digital, then yeah, you're probably, that 32 gigs isn't going to be enough. Um, but you're going to need a expanded memory anyway. So you, you might as well, you're going to already have to buy one if you're digital only. So, you know, it's one of those things. The system costs $300. And for the 128 gig, on top of the 32, it's not replacing it because it's not a SD card in its in internal memory. It's not a removable uh, SD card that comes with the system. So you get 128 plus the 32, so 160 gigs for $40 extra. If you feel the need for that, um, the external hard drive stuff, they said they're working on a solution because, like I said, you pull the system off and your game's on the external, you're... It's just, to me, it's not going to work. I'm, I'm not going to mess with it. But externals aren't any cheaper, so you might as well, even though you get a lot more, you can get a two terabyte probably for 80 bucks or something. But um, the portability side, everything, I, I don't see anybody doing external. So, um, again, the storage is going to be plenty. Uh, I don't even see the reason to go digital when you have these little cartridges, these little cases. Um, buy a carrying case that holds 20 games, 20 cartridges, and you never have to worry. Um, if, if you're taking on the go, I mean, what you're all set, the cartridges are small, they're right there, quick in and out. And if did you see the read speed of Breath of the Wild demo on the treehouse? Now, I don't know if that demo was installed to the internal memory or running off a cartridge. Um, I can't say, even though they were playing different games, so I would think there was a car, you know, a cartridge. It booted the game up in 12 seconds and it booted the save file up in about 20 two seconds and it was ready to go like boot it up complete to that save file so from turning the system or from booting up the game to getting your save file loaded it was like 30 seconds uncharted fours and it's installed it's way longer if you're not resuming a game like if you close the application you boot up uncharted four it takes forever to get into your save file so um it's gonna be fast it's gonna be efficient and i'm really excited about the cartridges not having to install anything and uh you know like i said 32 gigs is going to be plenty for dlc save files screenshots and i will see when they have the uh the share 
button, what, what would they call it? Capture, screenshot, whatever the button is. Um, when they add the video, maybe that's over the cloud. I'm not sure how that's going to work. We'll have to see. Um, so maybe uh, that will need some kind of ex external memory right there. Um, but it's it's such a non-issue. But it's you can tell, like I said, the Sony, Microsoft gamers who are looking at Switch videos because it's everywhere. You can't hide from it. You, their mindset, they can't comprehend that the game doesn't need to be installed, that game file sizes don't have to be 60, 80 gigs for a game to look good and be a current gen game. Like they, It doesn't even compute. It's not even an option in their brain. And it just tells you how programmed they are to you know, the things that Sony and Microsoft did, especially this generation with PS4, Xbox One. We never had to wait for game installs other than I think GTA 5 on the 360. I think that was the first one that did it. Um, or Metal Gear Solid 4 on the PS3. That was ridiculous, waiting 10, 15, 20 minutes to install part of the game. It was it was so stupid. Um, let me, I gotta do something real quick, so I'll be back in a sec. All right, had to ch check on some. So anyway, um, that's it for storage. It's it's not an issue, and you can call it damage control. You call it whatever you want. It's just it's not an issue. Uh, the last thing I had an interesting question from Derek Steel Fox. Uh, he asked me my thoughts on um, some some stuff about the Switch. We got talking about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and I'm just gonna give my take on that again. Uh, I mentioned it in the podcast. So okay, it's Mario Kart 8. It's the complete with all the DLC, which the DLC was what twelve bucks, so seventy-two dollars of stuff, um, plus battle mode, which has like two or three different battle mode games. I'm seeing only four arenas. Maybe there's more. Um, it hasn't been confirmed. You get four characters. You get Ink Inkling Girl, Inkling Boy. That's that's basically one. They're counting that as two. Uh, was it Dry Bone? It looks like Koopa. Koopa Troop, and then King Boo. So um, that's the new, and they're charging sixty dollars for that. So it is the only game that runs at 1080p native, sixty frames per second on the Switch. But I don't know. It's 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 a no buy at sixty. And hold on a second. All right, I thought I had somebody at the door and didn't. So anyway, Mario Kart 8. Um, where was I at? Oh, $60 is no buy for sure. Um, unless, now here's a big if. Now if they announce for people that either Mario Kart 8 owners upgrading, I don't think that, I think they would have mentioned it. I, I don't think that's a possibility. But here's the other thing. If they say... DLC tracks, battle mode, or for racing and for battle mode, free DLC coming like Splatoon throughout the few months. Okay, I I would think about it. Um, and Retro Death, yeah, Xbox and Xbox and ponies coming knocking on my door, mad over the storage brain, that storage brain shit. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, if they say okay, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. 60 bucks, you get the, all the DLC and these this new content, but plus we're going to have free stuff coming a la Splatoon, then I'm like, okay, I could see that. But I don't think that's really a strong possibility. Um, if the game was $50 as is, I'd be like, you know what? With my Amazon 20% off, that's like 42 43 yeah, I'll do it. Uh, if it was forty dollars, which is what I think it should be, um, it's a day one purchase. And then here's the other thing: the online app doesn't launch until summer, so it's going to work one hundred percent like the Wii U version from April, May, June. How whenever this app launches, and the app's going to launch 
basic feature. It's not going to launch fully featured from the uh, um, whatever the paid one is going to be. It's going to be a stripped down version. So from April, you know, end of April, so basically May, June, whenever it goes live, it's going to be 100% how Wii U works. And are they going to change the tournament options, like I said in the podcast? Are they going to change the friend lobby options, or is it just going to be 100% the same? The Treehouse made sure not to show anything in between, like the menu or anything. But who was it? Uh, was it Games, GameSpot or Game? No, GameStop. Or GameSpot, yeah. I think they had a video, and it has the Miis. Like, Leveled Head made a video. He captured it on his phone. They show the Miis in, like, a garage in waiting. Um, so that would be, like, the LAN. I think that would be the lobby of the, like, eight players in LAN or whatever. But they showed Miis. So what does that mean? I don't know. But I'm just saying that you go out and buy Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for 60 bucks on April 28th, that online app's not there, so all the invite and stuff sounds like it's tied to that app. And then once the the app does launch, it's going to be a stripped down version, and we'll see. But to me, it's just not lining up and looking very good for their, for Nintendo for that game, very online heavy game, to not have. And you know, I'm sure Splatoon 2 will be when that app when that game launches. That's when that online app will will go available. But it's just, it's a little weird. And I, I would need to see, hey, there's all these t new tournament options for item selecting and and this and that. And you can mix mirrored with, you know, a whole bunch of options. And I'd be like, okay, that's, that sounds cool. Um, maybe I'll get it for, you know, my Amazon Prime discount would be 50 bucks. It's still, the, I just don't like it. And I just wanted to just talk about that. I don't think that that's a good decision. Um, another Kimishima situation, maybe. Um, I don't think that's a $60 game. Unless you never owned a Wii U and Mario Kart 8, you know, maybe that type of person's excited and they're getting the definitive version, potentially, because they didn't really use the gamepad, even though I did like the, the map and the leaderboard being on my uh, gamepad. I could see what items people had behind me. So, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. It's, it's kind of questionable. And... Uh, I, I wasn't a fan of the port idea before, and uh, this didn't put me to, to ease at all. This kind of proved my point, I think, that uh, it's kind of ridiculous, and uh, it's, not, it's not worth the upgrade, I don't think. I'll just keep my Wii U free online, and if people want to play Mario Kart 8, hey, she's still got a Wii U. We can play Mario Kart 8. Now, Smash, the next Smash, or whatever they do with Smash Brothers, whether it's a port with... New characters makes a bigger difference in Smash. New stages make a bigger difference in Smash. And uh, that could be something um, that could say, okay, I could see that. But that, you know, that's going to be $60 to guarantee it. So anyway, this is, uh, this went on way longer than I planned. It was supposed to be uh, a shorter one, but, you know, I can't make a short video. I don't know why. I just, I see people make nine minute videos that have all these great points and say everything that I'd want to say, and they do it in nine minutes, where I do it in 30, 40 minutes. So, um, but yeah, we had a lot of viewers right now. Uh, you know, I see people chatting in the cups, or in the cups, in the comment here. Um, someone said four extra cups. Four extra cups are from the DLC, yeah. Um, Mario Kart 8 has all the DLC. Like I said, that's only a $12 value on Wii U. Um, so $72 game if you bought it and wanted the DLC on the Wii U. And, uh, you know, for four characters and, and a battle mode, I think that battle mode, honestly, should be made available to Wii U owners. I don't think they're going to do that, but um, I think it would be right. And uh, I would be, I would happily download that and maybe even pay five bucks for it. I mean, to me, that would make more sense. So, uh, just again, I'm not excited. I was never excited about ports. So, if you were, if you are, it's fine. Um, I just, uh, I don't think it's worth 60 bucks. I'm a little a little disappointed with that and some of the other pricing. Like I said, the, the, the dock, 90 bucks for a piece of plastic with a few inputs um, and a fan. That should have been 40, maximum 40. So again, Kimishima possibly, this could be his, the effect of Kimishima. So um, 
and the UI, uh, real quick, uh, the UI was simple, clean. Um, it didn't, sh I don't know if it's complete because there was no like, uh, at the bottom, the little icons, there was no like internet thing. So maybe that's a, one of the main, like the app, like it showed Breath of the Wild, one, two punch, arms. Maybe you got to scroll over for internet. Um, we'll see. No, there isn't an obstacle out. Uh, I think it was IGN had a full breakdown of the hardware and they the dock actually pulls open there's a plastic door that uh opens up and there's literally hdmi out one usb 3.0 it's you know blue and the usb c connector for the ac adapter that's literally it and then the two usbs on the side that's the uh the full extent of uh of the options um no ethernet no optical and uh it's funny that people are like oh nintendo's so behind the times but to me optical is such a dated uh technology like i don't even i have optical cables that are just lying around i use them for nothing um hdmi is all i use it's made uh someone who likes to do home theater stuff hdmi made such a big difference having audio and video in one cable um it's so so convenient so optical to me that's like saying oh doesn't have a you don't have a, a deadpool to come out on vhs like to me that's where optical is optical is such an outdated last you know it's a great it works but um in this day and age get an hdmi receiver and we also don't know about the bluetooth uh what is it it's got a modern bluetooth whatever the most modern um version of bluetooth is um there should be headphones that take advantage of that and hopefully some surround headphones, not just stereo. But I have a feeling if you have some nice headphones, uh, Bluetooth, uh, it's going to work with the switch. So, um, yeah, unless you're talking, you want your your old surround sound to work with it, your 5.1 with optical. Unless there's an HDMI to optical converter, I don't know. Um, you kind of, you're going to be SOL and I, I think it's, it's just kind of a waste at this point. The PS4 Slim doesn't have it. Um, I don't know about the Xbox One S. Yeah, it's it's one of those technologies moving forward. Get with the HDMI program, you know, types of scenarios, in my opinion. Um, you know, HDMI receivers and all that are, are commonplace. You, all your TV has HDMI, then you can have an optical go from your TV to your receiver, possibly. So, um, but yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, thanks for everybody for tuning in. This is the most turn, biggest turnout I've ever had for Juice Opinions. Uh, with 47 live viewers so appreciate that what's up everybody um i'm gonna end this and i'll stay in the chat for a few minutes see what everybody's talking about and uh we'll see you for the next podcast they're gonna have not a special guest but a returning guest we'll be back on monday if you can figure out who that is and uh retro death is going to join us for the juices loose uh, for the first time uh, once he gets his google hangout situation figured out so uh, he's a really cool dude, and he made a funny video where uh, it was his predictions for the Switch before the event. And, uh, yeah, I said I'll give him a chance. So he's got a thick accent. We'll see if uh, hopefully everybody can understand him, but it's going to be fun. We're going to talk more about the the Switch. Let's see, what did we – we didn't get to the online. We didn't get to um, the accessory price. We didn't talk about the treehouse much. We didn't go in depth with the hardware. Uh, we didn't go over who's got it pre-ordered um, and, uh, you know, everything else. And we'll give our expectations for the Fire Mom Direct, so, which air will be on Wednesday. So cool stuff. Uh, like, again, say again, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, maybe I'll do these on Sundays now because it seems to get more viewers. Um, you know, Thursdays and Fridays are work nights for people so uh i'm gonna go watch some football later on today and, uh, and just have a nice sunday and uh, i'm i'm still super excited about the switch less than what is it 47 days i'll be playing breath of the wild it's freaking amazing go watch some reaction videos of people or it's like i watched the trailer for like five six times and i watch people's reaction i still tear up i mean it's just that awesome so anyway um we'll see y'all on the podcast in a, in a day if you're watching this live and then uh we'll see you next week for another juice opinions so have a good one